Good afternoon. We've just concluded another meeting of the National Security Council presided over by Mr. President and we had in attendance all the members of the National Security Council. This is the third of such meetings we've had this year. Today's meeting primarily focused on two issues. I presented two memos. The first was on the problem of drug trafficking as well as drug addiction in Nigeria and the widespread use of these uh, substances and the dangerous impact on our socioeconomic situation. Thereafter, I briefed on the security situation in the North, West, and the North Central in terms of looking at the issue of kidnapping and banditry and uh, unbridled killing of innocent people. After I presented these two memos, the Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs, Inspector General of Police, heads of the various intelligence agencies also gave a synopsis each of the current security situation and what their various organizations and agencies have been doing about uh, this situation. For the issue of um, drug trafficking and abuse of drugs, Basically what I told council was that this has taken on a worrisome dimension. Nigeria's perception on the drug trafficking index has changed from the status of a transit hub to a production center. Between 2011 and 2019, approximately 17 manufacturing uh, laboratories of methamphetamine substances were located by the various security agencies and destroyed. That is a large number. At the same time, we've had increasing activities by illegal cultivators of cannabis in Nigeria. And these people basically use extremely large swathes of arable land to cultivate this illegal substance, employing militia men to protect the farms and also their storage facilities. Now, when you look at the issue of drugs, our main concern as security operatives is the ultimate destruction to the social fabric and the economy of the nation. There's hardly any violent crime today in Nigeria that is not propelled by the use of these hard substances. And these hard substances have been coming in from all parts, all nooks and crannies. And what is worrisome is that the reports we've received from the chairman of the NDLEA show that the numbers keep increasing and despite the closure of borders, we're still having to contend with the influx of these drugs. The problem here is that the reckless use of these substances are directly linked to the insecurity we are confronted with. Unless there's a collective concerted effort to deal with this problem, it will only result in this country hurtling inexorably down a bottomless pit of self-destruction. We don't want that to happen. And one of the ways of dealing with this issue is by using a whole of society approach in conjunction with a whole of government approach to achieve a whole of nation approach. 
Now, these substances that are in use, again, the problem is that dealing with such an issue as the proliferation of drugs is not as easy as it looks, even for the most developed of countries, because it is not a one-sided affair. You have a minimum of three parties operating at the same time. The drug peddler, if you like, you call him the superfly. The consumer, if you like, you can call him the junkie. And that person in the center who has been entrusted with denying these drugs access into the country. This person, the nexus between this person and the other two I have mentioned, that is your security agent or your insider or your government operative, someone who has been endorsed by government. It is extremely important for you to know that if there is a compromise on his own part, then things become extremely tenuous and problematic. So what we did was to invite the chairman of NDLEA, based on his reports, which my office and the other security agencies are studying, Mr. President has decided that we must wrestle this problem. This problem is directly linked. If you look at the nature of criminality, the coloration of each crime, especially in terms of kidnapping and banditry and terrorism. It is not the killing of the people, but the way in which these people are killed goes to show one thing. It is extremely abnormal, it is extremely inhuman, and these acts can only be perpetrated by people who are out of their minds. And one thing we, in intelligence and security have been able to trace is that there are certain drugs of choice that have saturated the entire landscape of the country. And these drugs basically from the top of my head, you have codeine, you have opioids, you have cocaine, you have tramadol, amphetamines, and of course, cannabis sativa. But the popular drug of choice is tramadol. And this tramadol is easily acquired. And that is the substance that has been the drug of choice for your insurgent, your bandits, your kidnapper. And if we do not apply this whole of society and whole of government approach, you get a whole of nation approach, we are going to be enmeshed in a greater problem by virtue of the fact that he who resides in the town, in the village, in the urban or rural areas must be able to collaborate with agents of government in revealing these abnormalities. I know it has not been easy. There's been uh, a gradual loss of confidence over the years, and Mr. President is determined to restore the confidence. So for the issue of drugs, it is basically related to every form of violent crime in which these criminals just at the touch of a button give vent to their homicidal instincts and go on this murderous rampage killing people. So this was the first memo that was presented. The Office of the National Security Advisor, in conjunction with other security agencies, will work on a blueprint on the short, medium, and long term to address this matter. So that is that. The second issue, of course, is also tied intrinsically to the first issue. That's the situation of banditry in the northwest and the north central uh, zones where you have a lot of illegal aliens working is just like uh, what you see in the mining sector working with um, uh, the, the, the illegal miners working with bandits and criminals so that is another aspect that uh, we want to deal with to get to the root of the problem of banditry and kidnapping. Of course, there are other wider issues like uh, fully equipping 
in the various security agencies. And then finally, Mr. President has also directed that we must rejig our strategy that is both in terms of operation and intelligence. We must rejig our strategy to prevent further catastrophe. We must bear in mind that we owe a duty to the people that elected his government, our government, and at the end of the day, without securing the nation, all other things cannot be addressed, such as uh, revamping the economy and also fighting uh, corruption. President's marching order to the service chiefs uh, last time, what's happened from then till now? Basically, these are operational matters that uh, are best dealt with by the Minister of Defense. I know that there's something that he's working on which has led to this meeting being delayed slightly. This meeting was actually supposed to take place before the uh, Salah holiday, but I think one or two things have come up which I don't think I can explain, but I want you to be comfortable that something is being done following that marching order. Kaduna, it's again, it's a political matter, and I think the governor of Kaduna State has been talking with Mr. President. So I'm not privy to the finer details. Governor Babagana Umara Zulum and the military. Yes, just like you, I've seen things on the social media. And uh, again, I don't know the finer details of what happened. But I know that uh, the governor will meet with um, Mr. President to discuss whatever led to the incident and um, the debacle. But what I know is that in another 30 minutes from now, we're going to have a meeting with um, the Governor's Forum, uh, a meeting, a virtual meeting, and my namesake has already told me that he's coming for the meeting. So it is only after that meeting that I can actually be able to to understand the nitty gritty of what happened. But like you said, it's unfortunate and um, I believe we'll get over this issue. Malang Adamusambo spoke about the last time the president um, did not conceal his anger about the declining security situation. What he said today was virtually a reaffirmation of what he said the first time. Yes, Mr. President said, you are doing your best as far as I'm concerned, but there's still a lot more to be done. I am more concerned about the promise we made to the larger Nigerian society, and I am ordering an immediate uh, re-engineering of the entire security apparatus. And this is something that I believe will be done in a very short time. But I just want us to keep hope alive. I know how everybody feels. I know how Nigerians feel. Definitely the president is not oblivious of the fact that uh, securing the nation is the primary responsibility of the government. And I believe in his uh, sincerity but again, since it's not an octopus, since it's not a spirit, if he delegates to people, then the onus is on them to actually fulfill the legitimate expectation of the larger Nigerian society. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.